Hey everyone, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. Before we get started today, I just wanted to let everyone know I am going to start doing shorts on this channel. These shorts are just going to be previews of upcoming videos. I'm not going to do shorts of past videos. These shorts are just to give you an idea of videos that I will be producing in the next week or so following the short, just to give you an idea if it's something that you may or may not want to watch. All right, let's get started in today's case. Today we're going to be talking about the awful disappearance and murder of Suzanne Morfu. She went missing on Mother's Day in 2020, May 10th to be exact. I'm going to give you some brief history. The couple was living in a town called Salida, Colorado at the time. They had moved there. One of their daughters was attending college. So they wanted to move there to be closer to her. However, people close to the family and friends say that it's possible that the marriage was in rough times and they were moving there for possibly a fresh start. This couple, Suzanne and Barry, they grew up in this small town of Alexandria, Indiana. They met in high school. Suzanne was very popular. She actually was considered for homecoming queen, whereas Barry was a star baseball player who was actually drafted by the Toronto Blue Jays. Due to an injury of some sort, that all failed. The couple stayed together. They seemingly had a great relationship. This is a picture of Barry when he was in high school. I'm going to have a map up to show you where the town of Alexandria, Indiana is and where they were living, where they eventually got married in 1994. The couple eventually had two children, two daughters, Mallory and Macy. Barry started up a landscaping business in the area, which apparently was quite successful. Suzanne started working as a teacher at one of the local schools. After her daughters were born, she decided to quit that job in order to spend more time with her children. Apparently, everything from the outside with this relationship looked great. All the pictures of them looked smiling and happy. The couple eventually, like I said, made the long move from Alexandria to Salida, Colorado, which is in Chafee County. They were apparently happy. They had an absolutely beautiful house. This is when everything started kind of crumbling, according to friends and family, which had been building, according to them as well, which we're going to discuss. These are just some pictures of that area where they were living at the time. Early on the morning of May 10th, 2020, according to Barry, he left his home just outside of Salida, Colorado to drive to a job site which is roughly 150 miles away in a town called Broomfield, Colorado, which I'm going to have a map up coming up right here. It's in the Denver area. The couple's daughters apparently were on a camping trip but were on their way home and they were trying to text their mother to wish her a happy Mother's Day. After receiving no response, Mallory, one of her daughters, became concerned, obviously. She informed her father that they had been unable to reach their mother. Barry eventually apparently spoke to one of the neighbors and asked them to check on Suzanne and see if her mountain bike was at the house, because apparently at this time she was doing a lot of mountain biking. The neighbors went over to the home. They found no sign of Suzanne nor her mountain bike. And at this particular time, Barry asked them to contact the police. At first, everyone thought that she was just on a mountain biking ride. Maybe she had forgotten her cell phone. Here's where some of the starts of the bizarre starts. Instead of heading home right away, Barry dropped off a shovel and some other tools for his co-workers at a hotel. This is an actual CCTV photo where he had booked several rooms for them and himself. Then he began driving home a few minutes around 6 p.m. I also want to mention that based on her close friends and family, they said that this move had not improved the relationship at all and it was not going well. The search was ongoing. They did find the bike. This is an actual picture from one of the police officer's body cam where they found the bike off of this cliff. The bike appeared to have no damage. 
first blush, they thought that this had been staged because there was no blood, there was no evidence of foul play. It just looked like someone had dumped the bike there. Not only was there no sign of a struggle or of an accident, her sunglasses and her water backpack were found inside her car, leading investigators to think that this was obviously staged. What made it even worse was most of her other items, her ID, things like that were found at home. Suzanne's helmet was then discovered about one mile away off of the side of Highway 50 from where her bike was discovered. And this is a general map of where the distance between where the bike and helmet was found. According to many investigators and many people that have followed this case, it just appeared that someone was driving down the road and threw the helmet out of a car. They then brought in various search teams. This is a picture of one of the dive teams that they brought in to search the various bodies of water that are in and around that area. Of course, missing posters were put up everywhere. It eventually made international news. Agencies including the FBI, the Colorado Bureau of Investigation, and hundreds of civilian volunteers conducted a massive search across this vast region. Her husband obviously became a main suspect. They took various pictures, looked like he had some scratch marks on his arm. They also took pictures inside the house. It looked like part of the entrance to the master room bedroom had damage to it. When he was asked about this, he had no explanation. Further, the people that sold them the house said that that damage was not there when they sold them the house. Then they found the spy pen. We later learned that Suzanne got this pen, which is a voice-activated pen, and records conversation. She was hoping to catch her husband, Barry, in an affair. Ironically, instead, she inadvertently recorded conversation she was having with someone that she was having an affair with herself. They kept this affair so secretive that it took authorities almost six months to find out who this person was. It was someone that she knew from a long time ago. They had become friends when they were young. They had reconnected when she moved to Colorado. They were having this affair. He didn't want to come forward because he had a family. He eventually cooperated with all the authorities. He provided his DNA. He had a rock solid alibi. He was nowhere in the area. All the cell phone data and everything else backed that up, so he was ultimately cleared. It is noteworthy that on May 9th, the day before Mother's Day, the records show that Suzanne Morfu and the man she was having the affair with had messaged each other over 59 times, leading up to a moment where they believe Barry Morphew had murdered his wife. At one point, Suzanne messaged her boyfriend this selfie, which investigators said was quote-unquote proof of life, the last photo of her being alive. It is also noteworthy to show these various texts between Suzanne and her friends explaining how bad this marriage was and how she was scared and how she didn't feel comfortable around him or even feel safe when he was there. As the investigation went on, cell phone records showed that Barry Morfude's phone was pinging all around the house on May 9th. When they asked about this unusual phone activity, which is coordinated here in this picture, Barry told the investigators that he was running around the property, quote, shooting chipmunks, which Barry said were a constant nuisance, which honestly to me just sounds ridiculous. The main investigators on this case did not believe this at all. They believed that he was chasing her around the house after shooting her with a tranquilizer dart, which we're going to talk about more in a little bit here. Barry told the investigators that he went to bed around 8 p.m. on May 9th. However, due to this new technology and evidence and photos I'm going to talk about, he had actually turned his phone into airplane mode for roughly eight hours. But due to this technology called digital vehicle forensic analysis, they were able to track his truck's whereabouts and it completely contradicted the story that he told. And for those that are curious, this is not pseudoscience. This is acceptable in courts of law. It has been used for years now. They were able to track his vehicle and get many CCTV photographs, including many of him where he stopped at 
five different dumpster locations to what he said deposit various trash items which really makes no sense why not just drop it off at one place why drive all over the place to drop off garbage they believe that he was taking this time to dispose of evidence furthermore the detectives at some point they found something in his washer dryer this is a picture of that something it is a plastic cap to a tranquilizer dart now this cap had no dna on it but they believe it was the cap to the tranquilizer dart that he used to ultimately shoot his wife with and then do whatever we just don't know he was eventually charged on September 20th of 2021. He pleaded not guilty to all charges. He also set up an FBI tip line, offered a $100,000 reward. He did eventually make that $200,000. His daughters were steadfastly in support of him. Although they had a mountain of circumstantial evidence and all kinds of other evidence the prosecution's case began to disintegrate when the forensics team found unknown male dna in her vehicle on the passenger site which was then linked partially to a man that had supposedly attacked and either abducted or hurt other women in the area. Again, I say it was a partial match, but this obviously led to enough reasonable doubt. And after spending over a year in jail, he was eventually set free. In 2023, just recently, the Colorado Bureau of Investigation, while working on another case, they found remains that were found in a shallow grave, obviously meaning that this was a homicide. They were brought back to the El Paso County Coroner's Office where they did DNA testing and it was later confirmed that this was in fact the body of Suzanne Morfu. Since the remains of Suzanne have been discovered, no arrests have currently been made. However, the prosecution and lawyers, various investigators, believe that they have more evidence that they will push to make a new case against the husband. I'm just saying everyone is innocent until proven guilty. It could have been this other just random stranger that this partial DNA match that they found in the car was. However, due to all this evidence that we have, that would be just an unbelievable, crazy chance, but it's possible. I want to dedicate this video to Suzanne Morphew, her daughters, her friends, her family, everyone who loved and knew her. And I just pray and wish that you will find out who the responsible person was soon, and I truly believe that you will. My thoughts and prayers go out to you during this horrible time, which I can't imagine anybody going through. My thoughts and prayers go out to the investigators and lawyers, everybody working on this case so that the people that were involved will be brought to justice and you will get the closure and start that healing process that you so deserve. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate all your support and feedback. I always look forward to your comments. Special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music. Hopefully I will see you all in the next one. Take care. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking with me till the end. I really appreciate all your support and following. If you'd like to make a donation to the channel, all my information is in the description. I will have my email address as always if you have any case suggestions or comments or if you'd like to make a calendar pick submission for next year's merch calendar. Also if you'd like to be entered into the next coin giveaway all you need to do is leave a comment and let me know that you want to be entered into 
the coin giveaway it is a one ounce silver coin which should be arriving sometime here at the end of the month i will also have additional information in the description as well as photo credits as well as information on authorities to contact if you have any information regarding this case and i will see you next time